sixth of our graphics series and this one here we're going to have a look at the idea of image ribbons and by an image ribbon if you're not familiar what it is you can effectively think of it as something similar to a, a continuously scrolling background um, or, or an image or a sequence of images that we will we will loop around and then play back uh, together. Most common use is as indicator for, for drawing backgrounds within uh, games. So we'll introduce the general case here. In fact, we'll, we'll have a look at the general case at the end of this talk, but the, the bit in the middle is going to be the more simple case, which by far is the most common case as well. Um, but we can define an image ribbon as a sequence of connected images and uh, maybe one image, maybe two images, could be 15 images. It also says maybe looped. The notion of looping is that if you're drawing these images out and you get to the end of your sequence, you go back around to the start. And quite often this ties in the notion of the seamless image, that if you draw the images side by side, you can't see the join between them. So again, for a, a scrolling background, this works particularly well. Alongside that, quite often with a with ribbons, we're talking about the idea of a, a viewport. There is uh, a region or a portion that is visible, and as we move the viewport, then we're seeing different bits of the um, the ribbons. And the example down at the end maybe ties this together. That uh, there we have a number of backgrounds, for example, from a, a 2D uh, beat 'em up style of game, um, which. For example, were too large to load into memory for one big image. So in this case here, it was split up into a number of different segments. And when we display one segment, we piece on to the end of that, the next segment and the next segment and the next segment. And as the player moves through, we're just changing the particular segment or segments that are displaying on the, the screen. And optionally, when we get to the end, we, we might want to loop around to the beginning, depending on if it makes sense to reuse that. So that's what image ribbons are. They actually are quite useful. Quite often the situation we'll use it is the one you would see here. So this diagram maybe takes a little bit of, of explanation. Um, in the background, we, we have our ribbon. Uh, so it's this big image here. And we're assuming that it's a seamless image that uh, if we were to draw on here, the next bit of the ribbon, it would fit together nicely. And effectively, as, as the player moves through their world, we on the screen are displaying this ribbon and then rotating it around. So it gives the appearance of a background that moves as the player moves. Plus, it, well, it is moving in the sense of being redrawn in different positions. Um, so that can be our, almost like a background layer. The actual game layer itself then, it contains all of the objects uh, the players, the collectibles, the opponents, whatever is going to be there. And they can be positioned at wherever they need to be positioned on that. So the ribbon is simply a decorative effect. As the player moves through their world, we redraw the ribbon so that it moves by a corresponding amount. And if we pair the things up, it will then give the appearance of the player walking against a, a moving background. Here's a slightly more sophisticated example, but it gives you uh, an illustration of, of what they can be used for. This comes under the idea of a parallax effect. So there we have the notion of, of want to convey distance within it. Uh, we actually have a number of different ribbons through this. So we're assuming at the top that we have a cloudy pattern. Underneath that we have uh, sort of hills in the distance then a slightly more foreground one, then at the bottom we have a closer foreground one, and then at the very, very bottom we have objects that are aligned with the, the player. So the player, if we assume that the player is moving, for example, by 20 pixels on screen, which would be quite fast, but we update their position with 20 pixels, um, the bottommost layer that notionally is at the same location the player is, we also move it by the same amount, by 20 pixels. The layer behind that, because we want to give the appearance that it's further away, we only shift that, for example, by 10 pixels. The layer behind that, because we want to give the appearance it's even further away than the other layer, we shift it by 5 pixels and so on. All the way down, finally, to our bottom layer, the one we were displaying first of all, which would be the clouds. 
um, there we are constantly scrolling them by a, a certain amount. So we're assuming that they are always moving in the background. And depending how you do this, you, you might also want to move them as the player moves or just have them always um, constantly slowly changing, even if the player is standing still. So all of those things combined together will give you a nice parallax effect. As the player moves, the background shifts at different rates to give the appearance of depth within the, the scene. So let's have a look at how we can implement this. And we'll start off with the most simple case, which by far is the most common case, is where we have a single image that we're assuming is seamless, that uh, we will draw it once and we can draw it after it and after it uh, to give the appearance then of, of a continuous sequence. A few assumptions that we have here to actually simplify this. So we're gonna assume that we have a viewport. So this is the bit of the game that we want to display. Um, it's got the same height as our ribbon, just to simplify things, and it has a smaller width. Now that's important. Uh, if it has a smaller width, it basically means that at most we will have to draw the image twice. And you can see this down here. So sometimes two segments of the ribbon will be needed to be stitched together. Um, so the example at the very bottom shows our background with the viewport fully uh, within the background. So there we're only drawing out the image once. The example above shows here how our viewport has a split or is crossing over two backgrounds. So there we'll have to draw out one image at a certain location and then draw out the next image at a different location, two things stitching together to give us the overall pattern. If the width of the viewport is less than the width of our background image, and our result assumption holds, then we will never need to draw out more than two instances of the background copy. If our viewport is actually wider than our background, then depending upon just the ratios of it, we may need to draw out three or more potentially depending on it. But we're going for the simplifying case here, and we're assuming that the, the background is wider than the viewport. So it's a question actually for you to think about. How can the ribbon be drawn to provide a seamless scrolling background, mindful of the restrictions we have here, where we can assume we've got an X and Y viewport centre, we've got a viewport width, and we've got a ribbon width uh, as well. And assume the heights are all matching in this case. So you might want to sit down, have a ponder as to how you would be drawing these images out to, to do that. Take 10 minutes and, and then come back with whatever solution that you have uh, put together. In terms of that solution or how we might go about doing it, um, different ways of doing it, what I maybe suggest one of the more easy ways to do it is to imagine, and this is imagine, so it's only in your head, we're not actually writing any code that would do this. Um, we want to imagine that the the background is starts in zero, zero and is then tiled across. So imagine the ribbon repeated along the x-axis. So over here we do over zero, zero, and then the image is repeated across at different locations. So take of argument, let's assume our background is a thousand pixels wide. Uh, initially we were drawing position zero, then position a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, and so on. Now, if we imagine we have this and we want to find the index of the first image that we need to draw out. So looking at the example we have here, the index of the first image that falls within the viewport is index one. So zero, one. Um, now, how do we work this out as opposed to the viewport being somewhere else but being a different one? Uh, quite easy to do. So viewport X minus viewport width, basically this is the left-hand side of the viewport. So the X location corresponding to the left-hand side of the viewport, that'll be a certain position. Divide that by the width of the ribbon. And here we're relying upon integer uh, arithmetic to truncate it. And it's gonna give us then the index of it. So if we were assuming it was a thousand pixels for each of these and our viewport is at position 1,400, then 1,400 divided by 1,000 will get an index of, of one using integer mass. And that tells us then um, the index of the image we should draw it. Now, we, we don't have an array of these, so again, we're only imagining them there, but because we know it is index one, we can calculate the actual position at which we would be drawing that 
particular image. And in calculating that position, we can then calculate it relative to the viewport and then draw it out at that position relative to the viewport. So this gives us a way then of actually drawing the, um, the, the, that, that image out at the right location. There's one other check then is that we need to, after having done that, we need to look at the right hand side of the viewport and to compare this with the uh, the end of the um, or with the location we're drawing out from um, to, to see if the image the background image finishes before we got to the end of the viewport so in this sense um, if the right hand side of the viewport is still within the image that we've drawn out job's done if it isn't then we're going to have to go on and draw out the next one across so that, that's it. There's nothing really more than that. It equates to, I don't know, five or six lines of uh, code and not really much more beyond that. Going on then to the more general case, and, and this is as difficult as this can be, but it is the most flexible general case. And, and to be honest, as mentioned, the most common one is the simple one we looked at. So this will actually people do in most cases, but we'll do the more general one as well. Uh, so again, I want you to develop an algorithm. Uh, we're going to assume that we have um, a series of images. So given a total of n images, we don't know what n is, well, what, that could be 1, could be 15, doesn't matter. Uh, n different images. Simplifying it, we're assuming they're the same height, but they may be of different widths. So the width of the first image may be different than the width of the second image, may be different than the width of the third image. So it's an array of n images, each image is having its own particular width. Uh, to make, again, things a little bit easier, we can assume that we have uh, an array here, uh, which actually holds the offsets of each of the images. So we can look up this array if we want to work out, well, where does the first image start from zero? Where does the second, the third, the fourth image, where do they start from relative to that? So we, we know their, their width, we don't need to work that out. We have that available pre-computed in an array. Uh, we've got a viewport. Uh, so again, we're assuming it's a height H and it starts at uh, a certain start location, VS goes to VE, a certain end location. And our job is to come up with an algorithm that given this array of images, assume again that it is a seamless array that it repeats around to the, the start when we get to the end. We've got a viewport from a start to an end location. How do we populate that viewport with the different correct segments of the images to completely fill it in. So more difficult problem, but have a ponder for that for uh, say 10 minutes. It's a useful thing to think about how you would uh, go about doing it. By way of one implementation, uh, we have this here. So again, draw a horizontal ribbon, we're assuming it's a horizontal ribbon. We're gonna have a few variables defined. Viewport offset, so, so this, initially starts off being viewport x so this is going to be the location of the viewport relative to our, our world if you like the the game world um, so initially viewport starts at a certain location and the offset is going to be how far across we have moved along the viewport so this is going to track our movement through the array of images draw offset it's gonna tell us how far we have actually drawn. So initially zero, meaning we haven't drawn anything. And as we draw segments of the viewport, we will increase this to tell us how many pixels across the viewport we've drawn. Image index is gonna tell us the index of the image that we are currently drawing. And draw width, it will be a variable we're gonna to have to calculate, which will tell us for the current image, how much of it, what, how much of it we actually can draw to the viewport. Uh, so we're assuming we have those different variables and you can again see them down at the um, the bottom. So viewport offset is the start draw location relative to, to the ribbon to our images. Draw width is how much we can draw for the current image and draw offset is whereabouts we're starting to draw that within uh, the, the, the viewport as, as how far we've drawn across. So the first thing we have to, to do is to work out well, uh, we know the viewport starts at, at VS. Um, what is the first image that we should draw then within the, the viewport? 
And we're going to make an assumption here. We said it's seamless, so we will have another piece of code that will rotate things around. Um, so we've got a while loop here that basically says whilst image index plus one, so that is the start of the next image, whilst it is less than the viewport index. So there we keep going across until we find an image that ends within the current viewport. So that's the first one we want to draw, the one that has its ending bit somewhere within the viewport. Um, we keep stepping through. Again, later on, we'll make sure that we're looping around so we can't uh, go, uh, run off the end of the array. But that first bit then will detect for us the initial image. Having that, we then say, OK, we've worked out the image. We want to draw it, but we've got to work out how much of it we can actually draw within it. And, and this is where things vary. Maybe better to look at the examples down at the bottom. So. There's a number of different cases. Uh, case one, we've got an image fully within the viewport. So if we are drawing out a particular image, in this case, we can work out the width of the image and we can also calculate that it fits within the viewport. We can draw the whole thing out. Second example is where we have images that are not fully within the viewport. There's two examples. The one on the left-hand side, we have an image that starts outside of the viewport. So in terms of drawing this, we can only draw the bit of the image that actually is within the viewport. And the example to the right is where we have an image that ends past the viewport. So when we're drawing this out, we can only draw out the bit again that is visible within the viewport. So we're not relying here on truncation of this uh, in terms of anything on the screen being drawn off and not being visible. We want to be precise in terms of things that we calculate. So we want to be accurate. Um, so what we have then, so the code, we, we, last frame we got as far as picking the right image, then we have a while loop. So we know we've got to the point now where we can start drawing things out. Whilst draw offset is less than the width. So in other words, whilst we still have something we want to draw out, we haven't covered the whole viewport. We're going to keep doing the following. And what we're going to do is to work out how much can we actually draw. So this is where the image ends and take away the viewport from that one gives us our draw width. So that takes into account both cases here, either where we can draw the full width or if we're truncating a bit off because we're starting outside, draw width then will give us the amount that we can potentially draw, removing anything that starts before the viewport. The if statement at the end is the check to say, do we have anything that falls outside of the viewport? In other words, can we draw more than we need to draw? Um, we do a check in the if statement. If so, then we just truncate off that bit. So when we've done these two calculations, we will have for the image that we selected, um, the amount that we can draw to the viewport and comfortably fit within the viewport. So then we, uh, we simply draw that out, whatever it is, using whatever mechanism we do need to draw it to the, the screen. Having done that, uh, we're then in the position of, OK, well, we might have got to the end of our while loop. So if we go back here, um, while loop was while draw offset sets than width. If we happen to draw it out and we got to the end, then our while loop will be terminating. If that isn't the case, it means there's still more to be done. Uh, so we need to go on to the next image in our array. And that's what we do down here. But you can see we've got a few moduluses coming in. So these are our checks that if we get to the end of the array, we want to loop around to the, the beginning. So draw offset plus equal to the draw width. And if we've reached the end of the, uh, the overall one, then the while will terminate. Um, beyond that, we say, OK, let's add on to our viewport offset, the width, and if need be, uh, loop around to the beginning of our image array and ditto with the image index. Go on to the next image and if need be, loop around to the beginning of the array. So that takes into account the stepping and the circular mechanism as well. And that's, that's all there is to this algorithm. It is a little bit more complicated, but in essence, it's the same idea of, of finding your starting uh, image, of looking at how much you can draw, mindful of the start and the end of the viewport, and then repeating the process until you've filled in the whole viewport. Takeaways is only one on this, that image ribbons actually are quite uh, useful. The general form of the end, um, I mean, it's a nice algorithm to think about. Uh, most commonly, you though we will be using a single image, seamless, that we will wrap around. And 
if you want to get a nice parallax effect by combining several of these, then again, it's quite a, a capable mechanism to convey the notion of depth or movement uh, within quite a lot of, uh, of games. Now that finishes this one. The next graphics series, we'll have a look at tiling, which will be similar to this, except that we're not simply repeating horizontally, vertically. We will be tiling, repeating a single image uh, horizontally and vertically to populate or to fill in an area.